Hello and good evening, everybody. It's seven o'clock and we're going to be starting this webinar, um, the last in the Laho Iho Iea series. We're going to be starting in just a few minutes. Um, give us a little bit of time to let people trickle in to make sure we have all the right buttons pushed and um, we'll be right with you. So thank you so much for tuning in this evening. Aloha and good evening. Mahalo for tuning in this evening. This is part three of our Indigenizing Mental Health series. And we're really happy to present a real special guest this evening, one of our, one of Papa Ololokahi's favorite guest presenters. Uh, <laughs> she's in demand that we fight over which webinar we get to have Dr. Alkahi Austin Seabury Hall in. Um, but my name is Kim Kuule Bernie. I'm with Papa Ololokahi. And um, we've got a lot of webinars coming up in the next few weeks. So we're going to share a little bit with you um, toward the end of the program here. Again, this is the uh, part three of the Indigenizing Mental Health series, which is in partnership with La Ho'i Ho'i Ea and the Department of Health uh, Alcohol Drug Abuse Division. So we've got a great talk story and really super sponsors. Why is Papo Ololokahi partnering with La Ho'i Ho'i Ea? Well, the obvious, of course, because we care about the well being of our La Ho'i uh, from Keiki to Kupuna and across the board, we're not just about mental and physical health, but um, also this is uh, yet another way for us to honor one of our founders. Dr. Kekuni Blaisdell was a pioneer in reviving what could be called the Hawaiian Health Movement, which began in the early 80s. Um, Dr. Kekuni Blaisdell also revived La Ho'i Ho'i Ea. And so every year, the, um, the folks over there at La Ho'i Ho'i Ea and we get together and put on some programming that we hope will be of interest to our shared audiences. So that's what this is all about. We're really happy to go ahead and get started. Tonight, uh, our mental health and the Mauna. And I would like to introduce to you, she really uh, doesn't need much of an introduction, but Dr. Alkahi Austin Seabury is a clinical psychologist. She is the executive director. Are you CEO or executive director? You know, executive director of uh, Iola La Hui, which is a Hui of uh, Hawaiian and Hawaiian serving uh, clinical psychologists that provide services throughout all of the islands. And, um, you know, we've kind of watched Iola La Hui develop and grow up too as well. And it's just an amazing organization. And um, Dr. Aukahi's at the head. So without further delay, um, Aloha Aukahi, how are you this evening? Aloha my no. Aloha Kim. I'm so excited to be here with you this evening. We were just saying right before we got on that it's been a really long time since I got to share space with you. So even if it's yes. virtual space, I'm so happy to be here. Um, yeah. And thank you. This topic is is uh, as you know, something that we all get really excited, even when we just start talking about this as a possibility. And so I, um, I'm going to try not to do any of the um, following a tangent or death by PowerPoint way of talking about this, but really get into some of the, the, the lessons we learned from the Mauna and the gifts of understanding that we have about our mental health and collective mental well-being as a Lahui because of the Mauna and because of the Mauna's place in history. And so maybe maybe before we get to the Mauna, 
just to acknowledge, and I'm grateful that, that you began us by talking about La Ho Iho Iea and, and, you know, the Kumu Ke Kuni Blaisdell, um, because I feel like maybe that's the perfect reminder for us that this moment in time, right now, COVID, that moment in time, the Mauna of 2019, the Mauna of 2015, those were moments in a long history of our Lahui, um, the more recent moments, but certainly there were moments that looked very much like it before. And so in, in, in one way, we're gonna be talking about the 2019 Mauna experience and maybe we'll grab some from 15 too, just for fun, um, as its uniqueness in, in our wellness and mental well-being and all that. But we're also gonna be understanding that we as a people have been engaging in this since we insisted they ho'i ho'i are ea a long time ago from exactly. Enelani, a long time ago when Enelani um, uh, responded differently. And, and so I think that that idea of holding from the beginning at our center, that when we know our history and we know our mo'opu'ahau and we know our mo'olelo, um, we know a whole lot more. And then, then it's just up to us to garner the wisdom from it. And so hopefully today, that's what we'll do together is pull a little ike straight from the natural elements, so straight from the mauna, and then also from our history and our understanding as we look at how it hit us together. We've had a lot of time at home to think about it, separated from one another in the last year and a half, although many folks just kept right on going in during that whole time, but we've had some chances to reflect. And so Absolutely. maybe with the wisdom of that reflection, let's hit it, shall we? Okay. Absolutely, so as you pull up your presentation, mm -hmm. I just the viewers and the listeners here that um, you've got a couple of slides, but then it's really going to be kind of a talk story. I mean, we will look at their questions and uh, kind of uh, inspire you to reflect on what the questions are, if you have any answers or just some thoughts about what it is um, that uh, people are thinking about tonight. So uh, again, to the viewers, we welcome your questions. If you'll put them in the Q&A panel, uh, and or uh, if you're watching through Facebook, if you'll please put those in the comments and we'll be scanning and we'll be sharing those questions with Dr. Alkahi. Well, my wonderful people, I probably shouldn't talk at all just for a moment. Think about this for a second. This is my wonderful dear friend, Anwar Nguyen Pan Luis Mele, on July 17th, after spending the day singing to the Kukuna as they were arrested. That's where I'm going to stop. Hiva hiva ika leila nakila. That's what she's saying there. And I think that, oh, that when we think about our mental health, our mental health is a lahui, those moments on the Mauna couldn't help but be so darn significant in how we both felt well and empowered and strong and proud of ourselves as a Lahui, pulled to be a part of something and also completely devastated at the same time. Um, and, and so I guess I just wanted us to sort of for a moment take ourselves back there. There are many, many images of those days and, and fortunately because of Lahui, many of them have come back to visit us this year. But what I want you to really think about is whatever chair or cattle grate or corner you were standing on on that day, the refraction of the impact of seeing the images, right? Social media gave us access in a way to be a part of things if you weren't there that never really was possible before, unless you were someone who had the gift of the spiritual kind of leleaku kind of thing that you could hit it there yourself. And so when we begin by thinking about the Mauna and its significance, and just using the 2019 moment as an example, we see both the resilience of our people and the strength and courage of the folks that decided that this was going to be the way that they were kupa'a, the way that they were going to not let this happen, all the way from the top of Mauna Kea and then down to people sitting in their bedrooms and their offices and showing up at, at the, the, you know, at the, at the state capitol and, sh and showing up places to gather, to be together at the university, anywhere that they could, that that moment asked of people to stand, to engage, and, and that there was so much eha and kamaha in that moment to watch as our kupuna led us through what, what it is to truly aloha aina and to stand for what you believe in and, and to watch that happen 
was both the most loving thing I had ever seen and also one of the most upsetting, devastating things to sit there and, and want to grip your screen. Kim, you and I were talking about this, about how you felt that there was a magnet that pulled people out of their chair. People who normally just chill happy hour, just kind of hang out and are good with, you know, good with Hawaii, but, but maybe not going to get out of the chair. We're suddenly pulled and called to be a part of things from all over the world. There was something about that moment that was a marvelous example of, of where our mental health as a people can be. It's complicated, it's not simple, but it was a marvelous example. And so I think that's where I wanna jump us off from today is mahalo to Anu Anui for giving us a melee about that. And then um, this was that moment, at, uh, this was actually at the university, that's me over there with my head shirt on. Um, we gathered and we began, and, and this was us uh, engaging in cultural protocol stuff. This was um, the people that knew that hula did it um, kind of a thing because we all felt pulled by this moment to be a part. And so one of the first ways we're gonna talk about our mental health is one of the big powerful things about the mana was that it pulled us together. And there was a common sense that although we have as many kanaka as there are in the world, that's how many different ideas about what we have about what's best for us. And still this moment faced everybody North in a certain way. And, and that in and of itself is about our resilience and our well-being as a people, as much as it was about a day that really challenged us to stay well, because it was hard that day. That was a day when we collectively experienced trauma together. We did. That was horrible. That was hard. And, and then to know how do you stand? How do you participate? What do you do with that feeling? Because just sitting there feeling bad about it wasn't enough. So we as a Lahui needed to figure out how to stand differently and how to, how to do. And so I think that's, that's maybe um, what I'm gonna talk about. So we're gonna think about this just from the, the basic construct of Aloha Aina. So when we think about Aloha Aina and it's on every t-shirt and it's all over the place. And sometimes it's one of those constructs that just sounds like what you're supposed to do is go to the Lo'i every weekend. Um, you know, there's this idea that it means you're you know, down with the soil kind of thing. And when we talk about Aloha Aina, um, I guess the way that I want to frame it in terms of mental health is about it being a reciprocal relationship. So yes, if you are a, an aloha aina, and if you're a kanaka Hawaii, generally speaking, you are probably an aloha aina. Now, how much you are a practitioner of that and how much you accept the reciprocal relationship, that varies by human. But this idea that to aloha aina is an action, it's actually several actions, but one of them is that you have kuleana. You have kuleana to the aina, and it has kuleana to you. And that reciprocity is where I think our mental health lives, is when you let it be reciprocal. So it is both kuleana to take care of that aina, and that means stand up for it, protect it. And aina is broadly understood to mean vai and kai and natural elements and all the things. Um, and then it's also about accessing aloha aina as a way to stay well and heal when we are challenged. And that's, I think, the duality. Of. So we're going we're gonna to go there for a minute. So if you guys are familiar with this triangle at all about, about kind of this way of understanding, to me, this triangle equals Hawaiian health. It's not a coincidence that it's shaped like a triangle, you know, turns out. Um, thank you for the visual aid. Yes. So, and so this idea is that health, mental health, well-being, we are balanced as individuals and a lahui when there is balance between kanaka, Akua and Aina. Now we can think of those as very literal terms. When Kanaka are in balance with the land and when they are balanced with Akua or the spirit, then that equals well being. And when one of those is out of balance, when one side of the triangle bends in, that's where you see illness of certain kinds. We can think of that very literally. We can also think about this in ourselves as an individual. So this could be about um, Akua, could be our spirit, our soul, part of ourselves. And then the I know that is that which feeds us. So are those our relationships? What are the things that feed us? And then the kanaka part is kind of like our behaviors and our guts and our, you know, our feelings about stuff, right? That's all in there. And so when we are out of balance, we're not taking care of all of these things. So if we look at this way of looking at health and we see that balance equals well-being, it sort of starts to make sense. But the relationships are reciprocal. So you can't say, well, the Kanaka just have to aloha aina, meaning they have to take care of the aina only. And you just have to give and give and give until you drop. 
and you have to show up at every hearing for everything and you have to submit testimony for every last thing and you have to be a cultural practitioner and you should be a mahi ai on the weekend and also you definitely should be writing your dissertation because we need more hawaiian phds you know you to say that you have to do all of these things to aloha aina and not understand the reciprocal part is that the aina then feeds you back that there is a healing and spiritual well-being that comes when you know that that's what reciprocal means right all of these give back to one another and when they don't that's a kind of imbalance too okay so we know that if you are an aloha aina these days there are lots of reasons that you might feel burdened stressed out frustrated disappointed angry depressed right there's all these words that you could feel as an aloha aina if you look around our community and look at all of the different places where People are making decisions about how land should be used, where folks are deciding about the relative value of one use of water over another. There are all kinds of places where you can look, just look outside your window, you probably see lands that are threatened. And so in that, we know that there's a certain amount of stress and kaumaha that comes with being an aloha aina. Also because it's layered with all of those systemic issues. When you're a Kanaka, right? When you're, when you're a Hawaiian, um, there's all this other stuff that's going on with you, right? That, you might see the world that's different, differently than other folks. You feel frustrated not being heard. There's both micro and macro aggressions and assumptions made about who you are and what you're worth and where you're heading just by virtue of your being Hawaiian. And so, you know, appropriation of culture, sort of all of that stuff and all of that thing where you feel like your worldview doesn't match everybody else around you and that that means there's something wrong with you, that's a kaumaha. So when we say, when you are a Kanaka Hawaii and, and Hawaiian health equals aloha aina and you're an aloha aina, yes, there can be stress because of that. That makes sense. And the thing is, is if that's the whole story, then we would all get sick. And that would be the end of the story is we're just a big old sick people because we have all this burden and we get all stressed out and we grouch at each other and we cause problems together. The thing is, is aloha aina is also the thing that feeds us. So this is one of my favorite pictures from a day at the Capitol. Does it matter which day? No. But can you feel the energy coming off the gallery? Aloha Aina pulled us together as a people. That's what's exciting about our Lahui right now. We talk about our Lahui rising. We were ready at this time. You know, at 2019, folks were more ready to activate in a different way than we had seen before in bigger numbers um, because there was something about this that pulled people together. And so aloha aina as something that gets you to affiliate, that gets you to commune with others. And we're gonna talk more broadly about the others, who are they? Not just the living and the humans. Um, but when we pull together like this, this created a feeling of feeling healthy and joyful and optimistic about our possibilities instead of feeling alone in our burden and in what's happening. And am I the only one who's devastated by what happened? Instead, even though in that crowd, I can look at the people there and go, I know at least 10 of those heads and they all do not agree about what our Lahui should be doing any given day. It didn't matter because it pulled us together to say, we can rise and gather in the difficulty and that creates energy, it creates health for us. And then we just needed to know how to do that gathering a little bit better to garner the other kinds of communing we needed to do. So rising together for a shared purpose is one of the gifts of Aloha Aina in this era. Now, aloha aina is about connection and alignment. Um, this might be an ala nui that you recognize. Um, that's the mauna there. Um, and when I talk about connection, the folks that were here began to learn because of the cultural practices that were happening, right? The ceremonial practices that were happening three times a day. The, um, they were learning to connect both to other people. So there was the part about we've gathered together that I was talking about earlier, but also to connect in to the spiritual practices and cultural practices that were then gonna steady us through the scary things. And that was one of the beautiful gifts of this experience um, this time was that the cultural practitioners and the folks that were leading this particular action were lining up together and working together in a way that was different this time. Or maybe it wasn't very different, but it felt different somehow because it was the so many maybe. Um, but what that did was it harnessed energy and it allowed us to connect into culture and into spirit, the spiritual aspect of things. 
it also helped us to collect it, connect into the natural elements. And that's where that reciprocity in Aloha Aina comes in. So this is the idea. If you were ever up on the Mauna, the wind had a personality. It had attitude and it had intention. You could be sitting there on a beautiful clear day like this. The sky is clear. You're chilling. You've taken off your sweater. It's kind of hot up there. Sun's beaming down on you. You're like remembering to put on some sunscreen so you don't get the bust lips and nose thing going on. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, the clouds are going to come in. Oh, wait, sorry. That's the rock and clouds. Kalamai, he was there that day. Just a little gift for the moment. <laughs> there it is. You see the you see the mist come in. You see the clouds move by. All of a sudden, it's blustery, windy, and going and going. And that's when you know you are actively engaging with the natural elements. You could not have participated in a single protocol there and not noticed how the natural elements engaged with the people doing the ceremony. So you had to decide in that moment. Am I going to stay on the side of the road and only lend my energy and my participation to the, to, the, to the ceremony? Is that what I'm contributing? Or am I going to get up there and am I going to dance? I'm going to exert because I want to move the energy. I want, I want the mauna and all the elements here to feel me. Um, it wasn't a small calling, right? You had to get up there and you learn the oli lahui and the hula lahui. And you, you got in there and you got, to, you got to put yourself in a place of doing cultural practice. Now, not only the folks on the Mauna were doing it, three times a day all over the Pai Aina and across the world, as I understand it, people engaged in doing the ceremony the three times a day. Now, what did that do for us? It wasn't a small thing. It was not subtle. It was major. We're talking about tens of thousands of people aligned in a single purpose to engage not just in a cultural practice that makes it sound so small, but to engage with our natural elements in a spiritual way that lined us all up, to collectively move as one voice. That took discipline and it took training. And it's amazing when you think about the mana of the people that got us all to learn the same things. You never felt more Hawaii than when you watched them wield their posture and their voice and simply make thousands of people they've never met before move as one. That is the power of our people. And those rituals and practices, the structure of dawn, midday, and sunset, that kind of structure helps our mental health stay strong during times when we're wobbling. So if you learned Eho Mai for the first time, or you've, you, you only used Eho Mai this time for the first time, as a ceremonial practice, maybe you learned it before, but now you use it as part of your ceremonial cultural practice. It wasn't just for when you gather in a space. Yes, doesn't it feel good that as a Lahui, we can all show up somewhere and we know three, four things we're all gonna do because that's what we do now. But also you can a whole life first thing every morning by yourself. That is another gift to our mental health of this moment was the idea that everybody got to learn the gifts that the cultural practitioners had known for a long time. That our chants and our mo'olelo and our hula, that our practices of doing things in a regular and habitual way every single day, whether or not anybody is looking, those personal relationships with the spirit and our natural elements, those things keep you strong. Those things pale you, meaning they protect and guard you when you're challenged. Those things help you to ho'oku, let things go. And those things help you work stuff out, you know? Because if you don't know how you're feeling and you're feeling really mad because you didn't get to see the rock. No, I'm kidding. That's not what I mean, right? But you're feeling really frustrated because you see this, you know, you see that things are not necessarily always going to go our way. Or you see that there's a court case that just, oh, or you, whatever it is, somebody said something really racist and mean and everybody's talking about it now. You have this eha and this frustration in you. And then you go do protocol. You just hit it, you go do ceremony over there by yourself, with the people, wherever you go. It lines things up for you in a way that readies you to handle the next hard thing. And because you learn how to ho'oku'u, just like you learned how to aikamumu, you learned all those things. And maybe you didn't even reflect at the time that that's what you were doing, but that's the way cultural practice works is it leads your body through it first, and then you let it go, right? So. You don't always have to have your, because, you know, our Lahui is full of brilliant people. And so we have this, like, we spend a lot of time in our heads. And so sometimes the magic of cultural practice is that physical exertion can break through when your brain is still spinning. So 
Um, I think that communing with the natural elements is something that we want to think about as a mental health and well-being practice is important. And then this idea of physical exertion being part of what grounds us when things are hard. And I tell you what, I can think of a hundred examples when Kia'i who are making tough calls and deciding and managing communications and doing all kinds of things up on the Mauna stopped what they were doing and went to do protocol. Why? It wasn't for show. They weren't in the front going camera, catch me. They needed protocol. They needed the regularity and the importance and the weight and significance of protocol. And those would be things that I would say would be good examples. Okay, so people probably want to know a whole bunch about mental health and how we handled it during that time on the Mauna and off Mauna. So we used to, we came up with a, a way of talking about that. The folks on the, the Mauna Medic Healers Hui were, uh, they're a phenomenal group of people um, that came together because they recognized that other Aloha Aina actions, um, that there wasn't sufficient support for the health and well-being of the Kia'i that they were encountering. And so they formed very intentionally trained um, and they have a high degree, degree of real, like integrity and values around what they're doing. And so um, the two po'o that at, at, at the Mauna at the time were Noi Lai Niahia and uh, Kalama Oka Aina Nihiu. And then of course, Pomaika Ifri, who would be horrified to know that I was calling her a po'o, but she was leading the traditional healers. She's a magic lonely lonely that I know. Um, anyway, that the Mauna medic healers were there. And from the beginning, because they were there, they were a steadying presence. They provided comfort, they provided a listening ear, they walked around and asked people if they needed lip balm, not because the lip balm mattered, but because the gesture of caring for other people really mattered and it created this safe support around the kia'i and everyone that was there. And so when we talk about the services in mental health or behavioral health that were happening at the time, the Mauna medic healers were there and they embraced the idea of figuring out how we could do a little bit more around mental health. And so the Mauka approaches, the up Mauka approaches were, um, they created a, a lokahi wellness, a behavioral health kinds of support. So sort of they incorporated that into what they were doing. And the way that I really appreciated it was they sort of housed it within traditional healing. So the hale kuka kuka was also the hale for lomi lomi. Um, and that included having listening and healing circles. This is a picture of me getting acupuncture on the Mauna because the Mauna medic healers are bomb. Um, and so I got quick acupuncture uh, protocol, um, but we did listening circles as well as individual sessions. So people could just walk in and talk to somebody. Now, as you can imagine, if you are a Kia'i and you're up on the Mauna, that's probably not the time to unpack all your stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's not the time to like have it all come unraveling because up there you're trying to hold fast. And so the supports that were there were designed to help people get what they needed in that moment, but also to have a space to kind of talk about the bigness of being there. And so many of the conversations had laughing just as much as they had tears, that they had people in awe, and also people who were bringing other kinds of needs for healing to the Mauna with them, and then were able to engage in these conversations and not feel alone. It was pretty magical in that sense. Um, but the Lokahi wellness folks also were doing the roaming and walk and roaming support. So they would go around with the other members of the Monomedic Healers Hui. Um, and they also um, provided some de-escalation supports when things would get high intensity. Um, they would be able to be there to be helpful with de-escalation and provide direct support to Kia'i in all the ways. Bring them coffee, make them laugh, and then the other kind. Listen, make sure they sleep, whatever it is. Um, and Dr. Hannah Preston Pita um, from the Big Island Substance Abuse Council was really, really kind of the steadying force of the Lokahi wellness there um, up at the Mauna, um, as she was when, when the lava flows were threatening in Puna and as she was when the hurricane came. And you know, that, that's where she, look around, you'll find her, she's there anytime. We're now. particularly proud of her because she's a recipient of the Native Lion Health Scholarship Program. And of course she's on Hawaii Island. She's in a leadership position. She, yep. like yep. you, she's just doing really good work serving yes. her. Yes, and I, as a Native Hawaiian Health Scholar, I'm super, super proud of her. She was also one of the first, she was the first Yolahui intern. And so together we've had a long journey and, and watching oh, her. Oh, I rise. didn't realize that. No, yeah, that watching her awesome. rise as a leader in our Lahui has been magical. But she was up there um, in a committed and give it kind of way and worked well with the team and innovated every time she needed to. But that's her. So I'm just grateful. And I just want to say for the Monomedic Mono Healers Hui, there were so many that made their life serving up there and they gave in the in the quiet they didn't want any recognition they didn't they didn't ask for all of that they just wanted to help and i'm the biggest fan of theirs and the work that they've done and and 
just so that they know they're, they're, I couldn't do all the names, but I, I can feel them all in my heart. And they continue, by the way, they continue to work to provide support and protection to any Aloha Aina engagement anywhere. As soon as they hear of it, they figure out how to mobilize and that's pretty magical. So Makai, so we talked about Malka care and then Makai was everybody else off Mauna. So this is our whole Ahui. And we said, okay, we know they experienced vicarious trauma from watching that happen. And they want to be there. They want to support and they want to help, but they also feel impacted by what's going on up there. Or they were up Malka and they came down to decompress. So what did they need and how, knowing that mental health and behavioral health services were already in a shortage before this happened. And then if you want to say Kanaka appropriate, that's provided by Kanaka provider or Kanaka adjacent provider, mercy. Wow, there's not a lot of that, right? That's why Native Wine has health scholarship program exists. That's why Papa exists, right? All that stuff. And so we already knew we were stretched beyond stretch, but we knew this mattered and we knew this was a need. And so we, uh, there was a reach out to say, who, who, where are you? Where are you? They that are Aloha Aina and mental health provider or and spiritual and religious providers and traditional healers. Where are you who want to reach out and offer your help and support? I had a Reiki practitioner call me and say, if anybody needs anything, let me know. I got there. If Reiki is their way. And so pulling together that list of community supports by island and by practice so that if anybody called or needed anything, they would. Um, and then that partnered with um, Dr. Lana Ka'ufua. She pulled together the Leo Loko Maika'i, the telephone support line. So she was there and her crew to, to respond to calls, people seeking help and support. And then when they needed more, then she would send them to the referrals, right? And so um, we tried to create our own mental health referral system that had levels of support. And then the last part was Mauna listening circles. So similar to the listening circles that were happening up on the Mauna, and it was all done by practitioners who had been in those circles on the Mauna so that the alignment was there. We held those circles. Now those circles happened all over the Pai Aina. So this was the one that I got to do. It's the flyer I could find, but it was happening absolutely in Waimea. Yes, Kukuna, it was happening on Maui. They were happening in Waimea, all over the place. And they had a shared intention. They usually had their own little style and feel and flair, but those continued well beyond the early Mauna engagement ones. So they started up in September of 2019, so a couple months after it started, but they continued on. As I understand it, the Maui gang still periodically meets um, just to talk story. And it was about sharing and healing. And I can tell you as someone who engaged those discussions on Oahu anyway, and it was right near the university. So it, I had a lot of smarties in there, a lot of things. The people that would come, yes, some of them were kia'i coming down from the mama. Some of them were folks who go, you know what? I'm a kanaka in the astronomy department. I need to figure out what my place in all of this is. Somebody else goes, I have access to different communities that don't talk about this stuff at all. They have a whole different lens. And so and they go, how do I participate? And I'm like, oh gosh, you're one of the most important people. Let's talk about what circles you have access to and how do you, how do you balance those things, right? Um, and so these circles were important for folks to debrief their Mauna experiences, but also to figure out how, how are you in Aloha Aina from this, the porch you stand on? How do you do that? Um, and then this is that topic. All of these things that happened to us, watching Kupuna be arrested, deciding that you were going to be the one who was going to be lying on the ground, um, deciding that you were gonna be brave and testify. And then someone says something snarky and exceedingly racist to you as you go up there and you have to figure out how to hold your composure. Trying to explain to your child why, why so many people think that that's a good place to put a telescope why people think that building another hotel is better than letting Aloha be where it is. Explaining that to your kid, that right there, all of those things can create stress on you, burden on you that can have an impact that starts to show. And I call that when the edges start to show. So maybe you're more angry than you used to be. Maybe you're short with people. Maybe you're not as able to sort of stop and enjoy the people around you because you're so focused on saving our lahui or saving the aina that you, you can't put it down for a while. But however it shows up on you, however that stress shows up on you, that's gonna be the big dare, is to say it's up to you to assess your own edges because otherwise what happens, and we've all been in neighborhood board meeting, community meetings, some kind of gathering, somebody's talk, where somebody's edges are showing up and they're taking up all the space in their room. 
they want to express their ea in an angry and frustrated way at a room full of kanaka because they're so used to shouting outside the building that they didn't remember to use a different strategy when they were in a circle of people that are fighting the same fight. And so, and then we see when two people's edges start banging into each other. And so all of a sudden what was happening in our Lahui sometimes at different times was we were spending so much time coping with the impact of somebody else aiming their edges at us. And now we have to deal with how that, you know, we have to all, we were spending so much time just trying to talk to each other that we never actually got to the thing we were trying to solve. And that's hard because we have hard questions to ask each other. We don't agree about everything yet. We have to be able to have those hard conversations. And we have lots of people with really good insight about what we ought to do, but we can't always get to those conversations because we're so busy dealing with edges. And so this is a mental health thing. It's my one challenge to folks is to say, you're the only one who can well assess your own edges and be aware of its possible impact on other people. And yours is the kuleana to take care of them. So if you wanna be an aloha aina for the next several decades, or if you have been for four and five decades, six decades, taking care of your edges and the places that this wears on you is your kuleana. That is aloha aina to take care of that. And your aloha aina relationship can show you how. That's the cool thing, is it's right there in why you're doing it in the first place, if you let it. So what is our kuleana? Our kuleana as Hawaii and as aloha aina is to tell our story. Sorry, this bumper sticker just makes me laugh. So I, I mean, it makes me smile. So I put a, um, our kuleana is to tell our story. Our kuleana is to bear witness to what is happening to our aina and to our people, that we, we stand up for it, right? And that we show up and show up can mean anything. This sticker is showing up, right? Remember when it was like Mount Aware Wednesdays? That was showing up, right? But there's all these different ways that you can show up, show up at the hearing, be brave and testify, do the things. There's a whole list of things you can do to show up, but participate in the ways that you are able. Again, we are not weighing the relative importance of being somebody who does direct action, be part of the Kia'i caravans, driving slow at the airport, cattle grates. We're not talking about the relative value of those things. And, you know, kuha aheo and recording that as, as mute recording artists. There's no value in us going, those are relatively more and less important. They're all part of aloha aina, and they're all part of moving our lahui toward our goals, or they can be, if we can have those hard conversations. And so, Participate in the way that you are able. If you were someone who only ever hung out in the garage and maybe pontificated every few times about what the Hawaiians should do as a Kanaka yourself and never left the garage to engage, then maybe yours is to leave the garage to engage in your community. That's the first place to do it is in your community. And then maybe participation means more. Maybe it means um, listen to webinars and, and form thoughts about it and engage in conversation. And maybe it means testify and maybe it means hang around with smart people to get some good ideas about how to aloha aina. Maybe it means, you know, you don't want to use paper plates and plastic forks anymore. Maybe it means, I mean, there's all kinds of things it can mean, but you want to participate in the ways that you're able and then ask yourself if that's all you're able to do. Now, that's the thing about our lahui. There's very few people in our lahui who only do one kind of serving the greater good, right? We don't have folks that are just kia'i. That's all they do for a living, that's their job. No, usually they do that and they teach. Um, or you are a cultural practitioner and you mahi ai on the weekend and you, you know, and then you, you do another project, right? Or you work for a nonprofit or whatever. And so because we give ourselves multiple kuleana, it's like we have this idea that we're supposed to be like the Renaissance folks who like, you're supposed to be good at everything and do all the things. It's advanced placement to be a Kanaka Hawaii, it is. There's a lot we gotta do we have to learn and know all the things right oh by the way get a phd right we talked about that earlier we got all this stuff we have to do and that's a heavy burden and and yet we're still saying okay engage more and so you're like okay wait am i supposed to like get a law degree in my free time so i know how to testify and what's the right side of this run ruling okay we can't do all of those things but we all participate in the way that we're able we always dare ourselves to check it, am i in the right balance here if all I'm doing is once in a while, I don't use styrofoam, there might be a little more I can do. But we're not gonna use guilt and shame on ourselves 
to get that to happen. We're gonna remember that we are Aloha Aina and act according. That's, that's where the ike is, that's where the wisdom is. Um, so find your way forward. That's the thing that's gonna make that difference is finding the way forward. Can, it, can many of the folks on this Zoom today give me a list of all the reasons it's hard? Absolutely, right? We can make a list of all the places that Kanaka and the Aina are threatened. There's a really long list. So the challenge in our mental health and our resilience, which is the idea is that we bounce back from things that we holomua despite things being hard, is that we need to find a way forward that we can live with as we do this. Because I want all of you still doing this in 20 years, not burnt out and crispy hiding from everybody because you got more edge than center now, right? That's the idea is you don't want to have all these burnt crispy edges that get all the way till there's no pizza left. It's just crust. Ah, I love crust. Don't worry. My favorite are the crust. Um, so malama your edges. What does that mean? It means you need to pale daily and in many different ways. Pale, pale physiologically, pale mentally, pale spiritually. Ho'oponopono, fix the stuff that's broken. That's that assess your edges stuff. And then of course, ho'oku, let it go. We're not, our cultural practices, our way of living, our spiritual practices are all about understanding. We don't just hold eha all the time. We need to ho'oku. That's why we learn those oli, to ho'oku things. Because holding on to it and not setting it free and letting it be no again, makes us not well and out of balance. And our kuleana, and this is the one that probably prompts why we need to do all those other things, is we need to have those hard conversations. And to successfully navigate the hard conversations, we have to be able to manage all the rest. So you can't dare yourself to do more if you're barely feeling like you're not just drowning, which in COVID is a yucky metaphor for what happens if you have COVID. So that's our kuleana. Okay, so I'm gonna stop backing now. Um, because the only slide left is mahalo. Can we get in to yeah. some? Well, I hope so. Uh, and I hope that the listeners know that we want you to ask questions because, you know, we have this evening time with Dr. Alkahi and she's here and we just had this wonderful talk about the Mauna and all of the lessons that came down, down the Mauna. I mean, they were up there, but then what did we bring down with us? And then when uh, shortly after that, when we went into lockdown, what did we continue to practice? And you know what I really loved early on? Well, there are many things that I loved, but early on when you talked about um, you're not alone anymore. You know, for example, I have uh, often been the only Hawaiian in my organization. That's not the case at Papa Ololokahi, but you know, which is the beauty of being at Papa Ololokahi. But I've been in other places, uh, work environments where I was the only Hawaiian. And what we did is we found out like, oh, you work for a PR agency and you work for an architecture agency and you work, um, you know, you do this and you do that. And so we would have these once a week gatherings and we called them Olelo Hawaii classes, but it was just group therapy for, you know, for the- Just to hui and affiliate. Yeah. <laughs> You're not alone. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, so not alone. And that's what the Mauna did. It brought together a shared, shared goals, shared objectives and shared way of practicing. And I think that was one of one of the best things that really kind of rallied, even for those that didn't know each other. You know, you know, Kim, you, you remind me of something. And, and I love that example about like when you're in spaces where the non-Hawaiians outnumber the everybody else's, when you find another one who feels like a kindred, you go like, yeah, yeah, let's let's be peely. Yeah. Now, the yeah. cool thing about the Mauna was there was very little distinction between human connection. So Pilina with the living and the spiritual connection with the Kupuna. So, and I found that to be one of the things that really transformed the way that I, I do therapy thereafter was to say, you know, I work with lots of folks who don't have a lot of living peeps. They don't have a social circle. Either it broke because they did some stuff and they fell away, or they just never had a strong one to begin with. And all of a sudden to say, oh, it's okay, you're Hawaii. Yeah. Just right here above you, all around you all the time, you have your kupuna. You are never alone. I was listening to the talk from Hopulani Holt and Auntie Polani Kanaka Ole um, and Auntie Vicky Otakamine a couple of weeks ago. And I tell you, that's what Mehana said. And I just started to cry. Mehana Oklahain. She said, that's what we learned from Auntie Pua is that we're never alone. Yeah. And so teaching some of my folks that I work with, yeah, okay, you don't have a lot of social living relationships, 
but you have your kupuna at all times, you are never alone. To say to somebody, you're never alone mm. and mean it, holy mm. moly, talk about a healing thing to understand. And because we have such a close relationship to our kupuna and to our natural environment, I, I feel the same way about the trees and the wind and the rocks and the ground that I'm never alone. Right. That's why I got to ask nice if I want to gather. Mm -hmm. yeah, right? Because I'm not alone. They're living too. And that makes you feel more assured when you're not alone. So we weren't alone from each other anymore. And because we all learned those cultural protocols, we knew we were spiritually never alone again. Our kupuna were always with us. If you didn't know that before, you know it now. And for those of you who are craving that feeling again, especially because of COVID and sort of remote distancing and isolation, engage in a cultural practice. Whether you find an online way to take a papa oli or you bring out that bag of feathers for that lehulu you started and only got four inches on and you got to do the 12 more, whatever it is, engage in the cultural practice. It will teach you even when the kumu isn't there to say it out loud. If you learned oli on the mauna or any other place, go visit them again. We learn them. If you're alone, that's how you re-engage, even when you're far away and by yourself. Beautiful. So, Kim, there's a couple of questions I see in the Q&A. There are there. a couple of yeah. questions here. So Richard is a psychologist, and he's a member of the Psychologist for Social Responsibility. So he has a couple of questions, and it's just about um, being involved. How can Settler Howley's provide mm -hmm. solidarity um, I'm, you know, his affiliations, you know, allow us to infer that he has a certain solidarity already, but really how can he, how can he be a part of it? What is, what would you recommend for Richard to really be supportive of the Lahui? Right. I would say, Aloha, Richard, thank you so much for your questions. Um, I think the way that you frame them is the beginning of the invitation. I know it sounds so silly, but humility is really the pathway forward. Um, the Mauna Medic Healers Hui is made up of people that are Kanaka and non-Kanaka, but they're about people who are down to support this, who are humble and want to learn how to help. And so I don't think that it's a, it's not an exclusive club, except it is an exclusive club because it's like the coolest people you'll ever meet. Those folks, they have a soul for service. And so um, joining them is about participating in the training that they have. They offer some awesome resource materials to help ground folks in Ike Hawaii and in the history of Hawaii to help settlers know how to engage in a way that comes from a humility of awareness about what even just their sort of external observable features convey to other people. And then sometimes some of the stuff that's not known about what you're conveying in your energy. Um, I think they're pretty great at helping folks be sensitized to that. Um, and so I, I, I encourage you to reach out to them. They, they've got a Facebook page. That's probably the easiest way to find them. If you found me, then you found them. You know, it's kind of the same thing. Um, and in healing work. So if as a psychologist, um, you know, you and I probably speak at least some of the same jargon. Um, but in, in doing therapy and healing with folks, I think that same humility helps. I think being willing to understand that that a different worldview might help the person line up what they need to do and heal differently. I would say almost without fail that encouraging somebody to understand Aloha Aina and engage with a natural element every single day is a really important step in healing. What do I mean by that? I mean, let your toes touch the grass, let the sun hit your face for a minute intentionally, stop and feel where the wind blows from, go in the ocean if and when you can, um, all of those things, engaging with a natural element daily and starting a cultural practice, those two can be rails toward healing. Even when you yourself don't necessarily know all the words for what that might mean, pushing them toward that opportunity might be the healing embrace they need. And, and so that that in combination with the other support you provide can give them what they're seeking because they may not even have the words for what they feel like is missing in their life. And so that can help them find it. I hope, I hope that's helpful. That's beautiful. And as a as the practitioner, he or not a practitioner, but as the therapist, he did the clinician. He doesn't need to be a practitioner in order to encourage practice. Nope. No, you don't. You can just help them understand with a very simple example, right? Go outside and let the rain hit your face instead of pretending like you're going to melt because you're made of sugar. Stop and let it touch you. 
It's your friend. It's why you're alive. Don't let it hit you. Man, just that right there. You don't have to know what the name of the rain is where you're standing. It has a name, but if you don't know it, it's okay. Your patient can go find it. Okay. How old are you? Oh. Kamosa's on there, I see. You know how old you from Maui, it looks like. I certainly do. Aloha, my Aloha. Know, my friend. Culturally well, Indigenous PTSD. Um, what is that? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to say about that is I think there are a couple of terms that if you want to read more about this experience, there's not a lot written about Hawaiian um, um, cultural historical trauma. There's some, but there's not tons written about it, which is probably the language that you might want to look for. Cultural historical trauma. That can talk a little bit about how we've inherited in part in our DNA, but a part in our shared history and the social systems and structures that perpetuated those things, that the things that had happened to us as a people have a traumatic impact on us now that affects the way we see ourselves in our world. There, that's one place that you might look if you wanted to hear more about that as, as some of our Kanaka writers have written about it. Um, PTSD more generally occurs more in our indigenous communities and for native Hawaiians. So they talk about, so when they, they study what they call adverse childhood experiences. So there's this list of stuff that can happen to you when you're a little kid that can, if you have too many of them, can like make it really hard for you to thrive later. You it's even like, like a die young. Family, a divorce, move. all kinds, right? Have you have you yes. experienced? Yeah, right. A violent event. Did police ever raid your house? Like, there's all kinds of stuff. And they estimate that about 75 percent of the population has experienced at least one adverse childhood event. And because of that, we assume that's why we call it trauma informed care. Is that we should just treat everybody like they have a trauma history because it's not a bad way to be treated and because the majority of the population is. Now, here's the thing. When you talk about native Hawaiian communities and you add that cultural historical trauma, the number is even higher than that, right? And you think about our traumatized communities and all the things they've been to, through in terms of transition and being unhoused. I mean, just all that stuff, you go, oh, I get it. So is our trauma unique to our Hawaiian-ness? Sorry, I said that like that on purpose. Is it about our DNA somehow is traumatized because of our how our ali'i used to fight? No. I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody who argues it's something wrong with our DNA. But what I would say is the history of the way our people have experienced colonization um, and all of the subsequent social and very intentional systemic things that have impacted us, that combined with all of the assaults on land and water, right? And all that stuff, all of that has resulted in, in cultural and historical trauma. If that, I don't know Jackie. if that helps how old it. Hi, Jackie. Really does how old. <laughs> oh, you know Jackie too. Okay, well, everybody's our friends here. <laughs> yes. Jackie's another social worker. Aloha, Jackie. What is currently going on up at the Mona? Any activity? Any activity? That's an interesting question. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to speak to what's happening specifically on the Mauna, but I can tell you that the kia'i of Mauna Kea and the Aloha Aina that pay attention to her, they've never stopped. They've never stopped. They've gotten stronger in their awareness. They've gotten good at responding to the current context in all the ways that need to happen. Um, the Mauna Medic who, um, Healers Hui, they're still active. There's an active dialogue going on about how to support different actions safely with COVID and social distancing and vaccination efforts and all kinds of things. All of those conversations, they're supporting. And so I, I wanna say, um, I can't speak to kind of at this very second what the two sides of the issue, like what the opposition is doing, what the Mauna folks are doing. Um, in any way, except to say that our, our kia'i have never stopped. They won't until the last aloha aina, right? That's what we all agree to. Um, not all of us, but those of us that agree to it, agree to it. And so we, we trust that it's still true. And everything I've seen and experienced is that it's just, they're just as strong and passionate and wonderful as ever. And they've learned more about how to engage with the broader lahui because of this changing time. Um, being a kia'i, was always a lonely journey. It's always been lonely. You know, everybody rocks a George Helm t-shirt, but were they proud to stand next to him before that happened? I don't know. At that time, people were scolding about, don't rock the boat, literally, get it, boat, sorry, didn't help it. 
Um, right. So when we talk about the Kia'i of today and what they're doing, they're, they've got more support. It's not a swear word to be an activist anymore. But sometimes I would imagine it's still lonely. And so I, you know, I think, I think Jackie in your question is the aloha I can feel for you wanting to send to them. And, and I think that's, that's, they they deserve it, you know? And so I, I, um, I hope we're all kia'i aina in some way. So, but, you know, we have to follow the masters. They usually have a good map for us. There you go. Thank you so much, Jackie. Good. Yeah. Any other questions? We've got Alkahi with us for a couple more minutes. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about um, Alkahi, what Papua Alkahi has coming up in the future because I'm not able to pull that up right now, but know that we've got weeks and weeks full of really solid programming and you're you know, probably one of the best programs that, um, <laughs> that we're going to have here for sure. Thank you so okay. much for talking about the Mauna. The other thing that you said um, toward the end of your presentation is, um, we cannot be hard on one another. We cannot be judgmental. And all those lessons from the Mauna and how we react to one another, they're all applicable now. You know, they're all applicable during lockdown, when we're at home, when we're working, you know, we're talking to each other through Zoom. We're not actually meeting with each other and hugging each other and hugging right. each other anymore. Right. You know, yet we still... We need to engage and we need to bring the lessons from our kupuna, from the mauna. We need to bring them all into um, this emerging place where we are now. Right, right. So if you haven't a home since 2019, that is your kuleana. It's tomorrow morning. You a home when you get up and you go find a natural element. Remember your practices because they will hold you even when the rest of the lahui is in lockdown and you can't see them, right? They'll hug you, go in the kaya, it'll hold you, just like your kupuna did. Um, and yeah, no guilt and no shame if this is hard. COVID is impossible, right? It's impossible, right. It's, it's, it's got, and now we got a Delta and it's like sneaky and worser and scarier. And it's all this stuff that's designed to make you go, oh gosh, I should be vigilant, but what does that mean? Do I have to sit here and just sit here and hold scared all day long? Ha'ole paha, no. Right, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to know our structures and make our choices. So we know, okay, this is what I do to keep my family safe. I follow my practices and I do them and then I have nothing to fear. If I know where my line is, I do it. That's just like I know how to do my protocols daily. Same, same lesson, just a different application. The mama taught us a lot. A lot. It taught a lot. Us Richard has another question. Uh, oh, this is kind of a technical question. Will you get the link to the recording for the webinar? Well, I can tell you, and I don't know if you have Facebook, Richard, but it is being live streamed, which means it's archived on our page for a really long time. How long? I don't know. That's a, that's a, um, <laughs> you know who, that's a Facebook question. <laughs> at least a year. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. At least a year. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks to Jackie too. Well, uh, mahalo nui alkahi. Do you have any final thoughts that um, you want to share before we wrap this up? Nah, I gave everybody homework already. That always makes me happy, right? I work. Yeah. <laughs> for, for me, it was a kanehoalani a. Uh, when the lockdown started, and I realized, you know, I got to figure out a way to exercise, and it took a couple months to for me to figure out what I could do. Mm -hmm. My routine would be, but now I'm always out. Uh, at uh, at when the sun rises, and mm -hmm. I, I need to pa a e hole any a. So uh, so I did. So I did. So I do that every day. Four directions, and that's the the main thing. I won't say the one thing, but that's the main thing that I brought down from the mauna. I didn't know that one before. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it, if you're doing it every morning, that's the pana, the heartbeat of your of your life. Now that's it. It's another kind of heartbeat. Anywhere you can bring the heartbeat back into it and, and bring Kanehoalani with you is a really good ally to have right now. You know what I mean? To remember that connection is, is so powerful because where doesn't, where doesn't the sunshine? You know what I mean? Like that, right. that reminds you of the vastness and beauty of our Aina in a way that like strengthens you, I think. 
um, and the life force. It's a life. It, it's a force. Yeah. And man, do we need that right now? So we'll, yes. we'll grab it, we'll, and we can and we can do that, right? We can take as part of the reciprocal relationship with Aina. We can let it heal us, let it comfort us, let it help us rise up and energize us because we give back to it too. So it's not a selfish relationship. It's not just, I'm going to come and I'm going to bask in the sun and I'm going to say, thanks so much. And then I'm going to go leave trash everywhere and, you know, pollute and, and waste. It's a reciprocal relationship. And that's why you can, you give and you take. And that's, Absolutely. that's I think, where well-being is for us. That's why we feel right when we do both of those things. And even when we slip off, that's how balance works. It's called balance, not because you get it perfect and then you stay zen for the yeah. next 30 years. Yeah, Everybody. it's not pa -a, it's balance. No. <laughs> no, right. It's 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 a work in progress. And and COVID has told us all, hey, everybody, you need to figure out what you actually know are your guide guide rails. And then when they all got rattled and the way you used to be well, you couldn't do it anymore. You have to find a new way to be well. It meant you had to go back to the essence of what about this made me well? Okay, let me figure that out. And for yeah. some people, it was Zoom happy hour. And now like, okay, if that's how you connect, cool, you know. For some people, it was like, uh, you know, dance your hula as you remember in your house. Cool. Yeah. So. But you're absolutely right. The core elements, because everything about this pandemic is emerging. There's no best practice. There's no uh, absolute science, which we're figuring out now. Right. Um, so the authorities, if you will, they're not lying to us. It's no. The information is emerging, therefore the practices are emerging and the recommendations are emerging. And this is something that we need to be fluid about. Totally. I mean, I'm, there's, there's nothing pa about it yet. No. And so a lot of times when you're seeking what you want to ask yourself, what need in me do I need to meet? And if I'm feeling uncertain and frustrated by that, okay, how do I meet my need to feel more grounded and certain in things? Grounding is a lot about Aloha Aina can teach you a lot about grounding, right? So cultural practice has tons about being grounded if you feel unsteady, because it turns out these are emerging, not, this is emerging knowledge. They have to have 100 people have that before they can know if it matters to 100 people. That's, that's just how that works. But um, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. And on that note, thank you so much for spending this evening with us, Alkahi. We're really grateful. Hope that you'll come back another time. But for now, yes. have a nice evening. Relax, you know, spend mm -hmm. some time with your family and mm -hmm. sharing all of your Ike with us this evening. We're very grateful. Aloha. Oh, aloha nui. Mahalo nui ya kakoa pau for this time. Thank you all for sharing air. I appreciate you so much. Ahoy, we appreciate you, okay. All right. Aloha. Aloha. No, aloha no.